What did you think of um, sort of just digressing slightly, sort of segueing now into World Supersport? You know, we've got two guys, or well, definitely two guys that I can remember coming up. So we've got Domi Agata, obviously consecutive double champion in Supersport yep. and yep. very comprehensively as well. Um, you've got Baldazari coming up. Yeah. Um, you know, both... We've also got... Gunter. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, no, I mean, uh, it's some really exciting guys coming into to Superbikes this year, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. Agatha, as you say, who's been superb and really grown into himself, I think, these last yes, few years. Yes, that's what it feels like. Um, and, you know, also his teammate, Remy Gardner, coming from MotoGP, ex-Moto2 champion. You know, he's class. He's going to mm-hmm. bring a little something as well. So that's that's going to be a really interesting sort of double act there. Um, as you say, Baldazari, you know, we've got some, you know, I'm really looking forward to obviously seeing Bradley Ray, who's doing the European stuff. You know, I'm going yes. to be really interested to see him do it. I hope he's going to have a, a Yamaha that he can ride like he rode his one in the UK. You know, I hope the team gives him a, you know, a good bike that, that he enjoys riding and they've got it set right. Um, because I think if he does, I think he's going to be an interesting addition. Um, obviously, you've got Petrucci. Daniela Petrucci coming yes. across, riding yep. the, the Panigale. You know, he's no slouch. Second in AMA last year. Fantastic rider. You know, Parry Dacon, MotoGP winner. Mm-hmm. You know, he's class. Um, what else have we got? Remy Garn Agata. Let me have a little look at my list. I did do a little list. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be an interesting, interesting year. Um, you know, I think Agata's going to be a very interesting one to see how he gets on. That's um, the one I'm holding out for. When I say that, I, I really want... I mean, look, when you sort of peel it back, I want Top Rack to win as much as possible. That's just my personal bias. But if we're talking about just for the championship and for the sake of, you know, this stranglehold, we've got three guys that are, like we've said, head and shoulders above the rest. The current mm-hmm. guard don't seem to be able to do anything above them. I've really been disappointed with Locker because I thought that he would push on he had a really yeah. good first year, especially from about yeah. the halfway point onwards. He seemed to push on in that first year, and it never yeah. materialized into this twenty two se- the twenty two season just gone. No, and he I still mean, hasn't seemed to be able to even in this Horef testing. He's still miles behind. I'm like, dude, you got to start getting closer. You're on the same yeah. bike as Top Rack, and that that was really also one of the huge problems that Top Rack and Ray had because. It was always those those three, apart from the really odd one off. Mm-hmm. There was no one else getting points off them. No. So you know it was that was and that was so damaging. No one else could get amongst it. There wasn't a teammate in sight no. that could do anything. Lowe's was the same. You know, disappointing year. You know, really disappointing year. And uh, you know, Locatelli again after such a great twenty one. You, you kind of thought it, it didn't seem to make the next step, but I think. One of the problems was you had these three exceptional talents who all made a step, mm. you know, as in, you know, as in uh, JR, Bautista, um, Top Rack. And you, apart from the very rare race, no one could live with them. No. So and I think that it wasn't even that they could live with them for a few laps. Generally, they were just bang, gone. gone. Um, yeah. And that was, must have been disheartening for the guys trying, but it also meant that, they just couldn't get in to, to help their teammates to take any more points yeah. off. And all three of their teammates, actually, because Rinaldi, you know, he wasn't impressive for me. No. Um, no. I, know he, I know he had a few good races, you know, Mazzano, whatever, but like, you know, actually as a consistency, none of the three teammates had any consistency. None of the three teammates could help the other rider. No. So it came like an, an in-house battle between those three. Yeah, I, 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 we spoke about it with Khan, my cousin, on the one of the previous pods. I, I could not understand how um, Bassani didn't get Rinaldi's ride. It's like Rinaldi's having enough chances now. He's not a yeah. youngster. He's been around no. the park long enough. But yeah. going back to Domi, Domi's like, for me, the, the great white hope to sort of upset yeah. the apple cart. If not regularly, then, you know, sort of, I'd ex- I'd really hope that if if the is it the what team has he gone to is it G G Y I I always get their name confused is it G R T Yamaha G Y T R G Y T R 
If they yeah. get a half decent package, the GRT, yeah, I mean that, that's that's basically the Yamaha, but it's GRT. You're right. right. The GRT Yamaha team. Yeah. Okay, so if they can get a decent package, even if even if it's only say ninety five percent of what Top Rack and Locker get, Domi looks so good on a super sport bike, and given that he's also come from a Moto Two background. He, he was, in fact, teammates with uh, Kenan Sofolo back in 2011. They were at CIP Techno Mag or something yeah. when it was a yeah, Moto2 yeah. team. Um, neither of them did very well. And I think from memory that Kenan did outperform Domi, but we're talking do a very young Domi at that time. Um, I'd like to think that there's, I think there's something about him. I think he's going to come in. It might take him about half a season, but I think he's going to start to surprise some people as long as the bike's good, as long as it's yes. good. And to be honest, the bikes will be good. You know, Yamaha, I know speaking to Denning, their bikes will not be, there will be very little difference in the bikes. Okay. Um, yeah, the Yamaha, the Yamaha, obviously, uh, you know, Top Rack and, and Locatelli, they will be, you know, when new stuff's come out, they're going to have it first. There will be that, you know, they're going to be the best, Yamaha's out there, but they'll all be starting from a very similar point and there won't be a lot in it. Okay. Yamaha are very good like that. You know, and I think the same thing about Bradley Ray. You haven't watched him week in, week out. Some of the stuff he's done, some of the times he's set, if some, if they give him a bike that he can ride, you know, it's unfortunate that he's only doing the European rounds because, you know, there'll be three rounds in red hot, you know, coming back yes. to Europe and he won't have, he won't have turned a wheel. So, I think he'll be a slow burner. And I hope that doesn't affect the way his championship goes, you know, as in he has to try too hard to try and catch up because he's off the pace and he's not competitive. Because, you know, ultimately, no one has been competitive with those three, you know, all last year. So for him to have to miss the first three, he's never done World Superbikes. He's going to be learning some of the tracks. He's with a brand new team. So he's up against it. But you know what? That boy's got some talent. I feel the same thing. And I think that if they give him a bike he can ride, he will surprise him for a few people. And by okay. the end of the year, you know, now, I think that he could be do, doing a good job. Let's hope so, because he comes across a very likeable. I'll be honest, I'm not big on British Superbike um, for a number of reasons, mainly because I've just got a chronic lack of time. So I, I basically prioritise Superbikes and MotoGP. And don't forget, you've got Denis Unju in Moto3. So I've got to watch that race yeah. as well. Where, yeah. Yeah, it sounds bad, but when you're a father and a husband, and there's only so many hours in the day. There are some times, and I like Formula One as well. There are times when it's Formula One racing, MotoGP, and World Two Bar all in one go. And I say to the mm. wife, "Look, you're just going to have to accept. I'm going to be spending six. Once I put those kids to bed, I'm going to be spending six, seven hours in front of the box because I can't wait until the next day. I'm going to find out what the results on on social media. So." Mm. Um, well, that's one reason, but the main reason for me, I can't get with the, and I, I do know why they do it, the British Superbike point system. I just can't wrap my head around how you can have over an accumulated season where points are accumulated. It's no different to football. It's like saying we're going to play 38 games. As of game 30, we're going to wipe the slate clean and we're going to have like this mini league from that point, I, I, I can't, and yeah. as a football fan as well, I just find it really difficult wrapping my yeah. head around it. Like O'Halloran was basically cheated out of the 21 championship. No disrespect to Taron, but from what, yeah. I, from, from what little I've read and know, he basically ruled the first, what, three quarters of the season and then had yeah. it stripped of him going into the showdown. And I just, yeah. I find it really yeah, difficult it? getting around that. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, like anything, the racing's brilliant. There's loads going on. The teams are great. The riders are great. Um, you know, it, it's a it's a very very competitive championship with a lot of very good guys on good bikes. So, for me, I'm a huge fan of it. Obviously, I used to do it. The racing's great. It's very watchable. It's very busy. So, you know, I get it. Listen, there's only so much time in the day. You know, it's um, but it's it's a great series. Is it fair? Well, it's not fair on the guy like O'Halloran. You know, he's had it stolen off him in the showdown twice now. Um, but it's the same for everyone. So in another way, you could say, well, that's the rules. You know, it's not like they're changing the rules. That's the rules. And yeah. the guys don't really like it. Um, well, certainly the leaders don't like it because, you know, they've generally built up, built up a lead. And, um, you know, I, I know we're not going to go into British Superbikes. It's changed slightly this year. It's going to sure. be modified again. But, but it's... Um, 
you know, in its but actually as a spectacle, it's brilliant. Okay. I might need to, to sort of then uh, maybe relax my stance on that and try to give it, if, you, if not live, then just, try and watch some highlights. Exactly that, you know, exactly that. Watch a highlight show, you know, watch a, you know, uh, just skim it forward and just watch the, the two races. Obviously, they're a lot shorter than World Superbikes, but, you know, I think if you like motorcycle racing, oh my God, you're going to love BSB. How can you not? I, I, I'll be honest, but I did. I did when it was your time. You know, that those, again, we used oh, that a classic word. era. The, the, Unbelievable yeah, one. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, maybe we might, I don't know, if you're up for it, we might do another pod where we talk more about your uh, time uh, in, in British Supers. But I, I you know, I, those halcyon days of, you know, the Virgin Mobile, uh, Steve Hislop, rest his soul, on the Monster Mob Ducati, yeah. uh, John Reynolds on the Reve Red Bull, uh, Sean Emmett. Yeah. You know, the, this was me yeah, yeah. in my late, in my early 20s, really, yeah. really, you know, and I got to see a few races. When I was at Motorcycle Racer magazine, you know, um, Ian was, Ian Wheeler, who was the editor. Again, yeah. um, I think he was, what was the, what was the, was it Red Bull it was Ducati? Kawas- it was, yeah, it was Red Bull. Yeah, he was, I mean, he was, he was Kawasaki for a long while as well, wasn't he? But um, yeah, yeah. He, I was a Red Bull. He wasn't Red Bull when I was there, but maybe he was afterwards. I don't know. When Rutter was there, I think 2001, Rutter was with Red Bull Ducati, but I think that was their name. No, I'm not sure And he then was, Nick, Nick Med, Nick Med was his teammate, from what I remember. He was like a pay rider. Like, yeah, I think he had a bit of a rich dad that he could afford to be in the uh, team. But No, I think we're confusing a couple of things. Certainly not Red Bull. They they weren't those riders weren't at Red Bull, but right. but actually I mean listen it's it's you know it's um you know, yeah I got to speak to Rutter I got to go to the old Snetterton because it's changed a lot now isn't it the the yep. the old yep. Snetterton I got to go to um I got to well, there was a there was one other track I think I managed to go to maybe it was what's the super fast one um, Fruxton Fruxton went to Fruxton as well uh, met Glenn Richards when he was on the seven fifty quack. Yeah, he's a good uh, bloke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I like Glenn. Um, yeah. So basically, just before we sort of wrap things up, World Super Sport. So the big boys are gone. Domi's gone. Baldassare is yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got Schrotter coming in from. He's going to be Bahatdin's teammate at MV. Yeah. What did yeah, you yeah. make of What did you make of Jan and Bahatdin? Because uh, especially uh, Jan, interesting character. I got to speak to him at Donny. He didn't have a very good time there. And in fact, after that, he said, I'm coming off social media. My guess is that Kenan fired a rocket and said, I'm not having this and you need yeah. to buck up. But then really seemed to go from strength to strength. He had a bit of an indifferent start, but by about h- halfway through the season, really started getting competitive on the MV. What was your thoughts on uh, Supersport? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's a great class. I mean, last year, Agata, as you say, was in a class of his own. Um, I think the Envy's a great bike. We know that it can at times, you know, be a bit soft mechanically. Um, But I think when it works well, it works really well. And I I feel sometimes actually probably a fraction, sorry for the hut at at points, because... You know, he obviously has got some big shoes to follow. Mm-hmm. You know, the other Turkish riders as well, what they're achieving. And I think that it looks to me, and on shoes sometimes, like they put themselves under enormous pressure. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think sometimes probably a bit unfairly. I can remember on shoe, like in, I don't know whether it was Argentina or Thailand or somewhere where, where he finished third and he had a face like a slapped ass. You <laughs> yeah. know, and he was like... And and it was like, hold on a second here, you still finished third in the world on mm. a Kawasaki, which isn't as competitive as the Yamaha's. Sure. You've ridden the wheels off it. You know, you should be enjoying that. Even mm. if you want to be winning, you should still be enjoying that. That's what you're doing it for. And you've not hurt anything. Nothing's broken. You know, and actually, and it made me realize sometimes, you know, we all put ourselves under pressure as riders, but it kind of also made me realize that, you know, there's probably a crop of sort of underling Turkish riders coming through who are feeling that pressure. And, um, and Kenan, as you say, he's probably, uh, you know, he's, he's on such a pedestal and he's done so much and achieved so much and done so much for, for Turkish bike racing. But he also, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't pull any punches and, 
you know, if he doesn't feel you're putting the effort in or something like that, you know, a few words from him and I'm sure you've got the the, the world on your back. Mm. And I don't always think that can be is constructive, um, you know, because praise often does a lot more than, um, you know, than sort of being hard and harsh on someone, being sure. negative. Um, so I think, you know, he showed that he's got some talent. You know, they both have. Um the, neither were on the best bikes. Um, let's see how this season develops. You know, experience again. You know, it, so let's kind of see how this this year goes for them. You know, it's going to be great to have two Turkish riders in there for you guys. Obviously, we've also got some exciting Brits coming in. Mackenzie, obviously coming in. You know, on the Honda is going to be great. You know, it's a great thing for the championship having Hondas back in the championship as well. Yes, yes. Um, you know, that's that's going to be a wonderful thing. I mean, there's there's six different manufacturers, you know, in it this year. Um, so I'm, I'm going to interrupt be... you there. When you say Mackenzie, excuse my ignorance, we're not talking about Taron, are we? Or is there a different Mackenzie? Yeah. No, we're talking about Taron Mackenzie. It will be Taron. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So okay. Taron Mackenzie is in World Supersport on a Honda. Right. Um, so he's sort of yeah, done the Johnny Ray way of doing it. So where JR was a, a British superbike rider, but rider, but basically said, all right, I'll, to get in that paddock, I'll compromise and go yeah. down a class effectively. Yeah. And right. so did Cal. And actually, I wish yes. I'd done yeah. similar things. I, I actually had that offer from Yamaha after my Virgin Mobile year, and I turned it down because I didn't want to, I wanted to ride superbikes. Right. Um, and, and then, you know, it's, um, I look at what other people have done, but hey, it's water under the bridge. I'm not, I'm not fussed about it. I'm really not. These things happen. We'll talk about that you on know. the next one. <laughs> um, but, but my point is, it's, you know, it's, it's actually, it's a routine. And, you know, I felt slightly sorry for McKenzie to have won the championship and not get a chance to come out. So interesting for him. Tom Booth Amos, he's back for another year, you know, talking yep. about a few Brits. I rate him. I think he's a good rider. He's very he's good. A, very good. And so I'm, I'll be interested to see what, what he can do. He's with Pachetti. So, you know, um, you know, much better, much better team. So hopefully that could be interesting for him. And we've got John McPhee coming over from Mo yes. obviously Moto3 race that's winner. The, that's the big so, one I forgot. Uh, John McPhee. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so he's coming on. Another guy called um, True Love that's coming from from British. So, you know, we've got four Brits, you know, you've got a couple of Turkish riders and this. And it's great to see some new blood coming in. And with yes. Agatha, who's dominated it for two years, mm. moving on, you know, it's all to play for. Um, you know, you've got Manzi, who's going to be good. You know, you've got some guys coming across from, from Moto2. So it looks like a really good year and again with the new rules what have we got honda yamaha kawasaki takati triumph and mv so brilliant i mean it's a shame there's no aprilias in there i'd like to have seen there you know it would have been nice if someone could have adjusted that and, and got some of them in there but again when we talk about these balancing rules they've done so superbly well to have these all these different bikes of different capacities different styles and they looked really quite level last year you'd have probably still just chosen the Yamaha yep you know as an all-round package um but actually they didn't look much in it and I think that had you put Agata on pretty much any of those bikes last season I think he could probably could have won on them yeah um my, on my personal view um, I think so but but actually, I think, you know, it's great. You know, when was the last time we had six different manufacturers? When was the last time we had all this blood, new blood coming in? You know, it, again, it just looks like, and I'm so pleased, World Superbikes, World Superbikes, it's needed a bit of a shake. It's woken back up. Yes. And it's, you know, the, the only way you're going to get new guys to beat these guys is by getting new guys in because the rest of the guys have been hanging around for years. And, you know, they they could have number twos, whatever, but... But actually, what do you want to do? Do you want two number ones or do you want a number one and a number two? And and so it's, I, I think it's a wonderful thing to see. And I'll be fascinated to see how Mackenzie gets on. You know, he's a little rider. You know, he's yeah. a, you know, super sport's going to gonna suit him in some ways. Um, and actually, if he can do a good job and, you know, so, so it'll be interesting. And, um, you know, I thought that, um, you know, that Onchu as well, you know, the Turkish rider, I thought he, wrote, he had some amazing riders last year. And I do apologise if I'm saying these name slightly wrong because i've heard you say them sometimes i'm like damn i've got this slightly wrong so that, at the end of this at the end of this i'm gonna get you i'm gonna write it down phonetically okay. on all these names so i can improve that because no problem it's something mate. that you, you all you all do naturally don't you from where you're from yes, and yeah. so i do apologize to any nah, turkish listeners who are sort of saying what's he saying but um but actually i i thought that you know he showed some real 
heart and grit and got dug in. And I think that, you know, again, I, I think that he it looked to me like he should be taking a bit more enjoyment from it. Sometimes I think he's put himself under a bit too much pressure, as I said before, because, you know, at the end of the day, you're still a short sport. You never know what's around the corner. And, you know, you're standing on a world superbike podium. You should be enjoying that. And no still a teenager. You. Exactly, right? That's so it's kind of, you know, it's exactly. The world's his oyster. It's, it's young and, and you know, so it's kind of, you know, it's just really exciting times. You know, we've got some exciting Brits. We've got some exciting Turkish riders and, and obviously lots of Italians and Spanish. And, you know, we and I noticed actually that I hadn't seen until I looked earlier that there's a, there's an, uh, uh, a Malki Abe from Japan. Okay. And I just wonder whether he's a relation. I didn't Maybe. have time to, yeah. to uh, whether he's in relation to, to Norikuke Abe, Abe. So that would be interesting to see. I'll have to do a little bit of homework on that. But actually, I just printed off a couple of minutes before we went on. I thought, <laughs> I better double check. There's nothing. I've been so busy in other stuff as well, like you and I had to do. I literally got in at 10 to 6. Uh, <laughs> and I was, like, <laughs> so I was like, right, damn, you know, I didn't have Charles to do anything. Luckily, I mean, I'll keep on top of it anyway. Oh, but, mate, you could have just thought, texted me and gone, look, I'm running a bit late. Give me about another half an hour or so. Uh, listen, it, I know, but after <laughs> yesterday and stuff, that, that was fine. But I just didn't have a chance to, to see whether, you know, that Abe, it could it might be just a common name in Japan. Who knows? Yeah. But it just, you know, also at the same time, I thought, well, I have to have a little, little, little look into that. And I'll, I will certainly know when I come off is this, I'll have a, a little look about it but um yeah no it looks um you know it looks good some new australians coming in as well and so yeah i think it should be a an interesting you know really interesting year next year i'm looking forward to to watching it and see how these balancing rules yes. that have done so well in world super sport you know see how they progress and yep. and see how that you know it, it all kind of comes together so the big question now that we've got no dominant champion are we going to see somebody take his place or do you think it's going to be more of a tight knit thing with different guys taking different wins. I have to say, Manzi going to Tenkati that scares me. Yeah, I mean, He's basically, quick. you've just took the words. You know, if I was betting on a favourite right now, that would be it. Yeah. Man, yeah, he's on the Tenkati Yamaha. They boys know how to build a bike. They've won it two years in a row. They know all the settings, all the gearing. You know, he's going to have a starting point ever. And he was super impressive, you know, he taking was. wins on that triumph last yep. year you know he's a, he's a classy rider he's big for one but he folds up well mm -hmm. um and he's not fat you know he's very lean he's a string of a man but he's quite big um but i think you know i think he's my he would be my favorite i have to i think i have to agree as much as i, lo I want to see john step up and i've even said it in my latest post on the fast turks instagram i said it's fourth year now with the team it's time for him to sort of you know start strong be strong throughout the, the the middle of the season and finish strong. Whether that's going to be enough against a a, a talent like Manzi on a very you know uh, you know mm. good bike, uh, uh, the R6. Um, I should have checked who's on the Evan Brothers uh, now that baldazari has gone. Who's going to be on the Evan Brothers R6? The Evan Brothers is um, Mantovani, Andrea Mantovani Ant from Italy. Mantovani. Um, and the other one also we've got to mention because obviously Jorge Navarro is, yes come from Moto2 uh, from Moto2 you know he is class he's mm. Manzi's teammate so he, and, uh, he is definitely going to be winning races yes, um, yes. so yeah he will be he will be up there um, you know, obviously Mantovani you know he's he's going to be interesting Schrotter's there Marcel Schrotter yeah um, you know he's coming over the you know, we got some of the Nicolo Beluga who's there last time. Kakasulo, um, you know, he's staying on that Takati. Um, he'll be up there. He'll be yeah, up there. He'll 100%. be up there. Um, Nordin, um, you know, he's McKenzie's teammate on the Honda. Obviously, Bayliss, second year, Oliver Bayliss. Yeah. Ollie Bayliss. Had some so good rides. Cool. Yeah, he had some, yeah, I think it was, you know, it's a big step coming to World Championship. And I think it will be interesting a second year's. A second year is always really helpful. Yep. Um, uh, you know, he's got big, again, he's got big shoes to fill, isn't he? It must be very hard to be the son of... Troy. You know, I, I saw the, Troy at Donny. He was working for the paddock and I had to stop him. I said, Troy, Troy, because he, he sort of looked like he wanted to get somewhere. But I was like, no, no, I'm not going to get this opportunity again. So uh, I stopped him. I went, Troy, Troy. I said, look, can I have a quick photo? I said, I've got to be honest, I was a Haga fan. He went, Even I was a Haga fan, he said. <laughs> Such a nice guy. Really, really. 
Yeah, he's a great, he's a great guy, and and it'll be interesting to see what McPhee does. You know, just after mm-hmm. all that time on a a Moto Three bike, you know, he never quite got on with the Moto Two, and I hope that you know he'll get on with this. Obviously, he's a class rider, but yes, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how he does, and uh, and also Adrian Huertes last year, the the young Spaniard, he was a you know he was a Super Sport Three Hundred champion Champ. a few yep. years ago, and. Um, I like the cut of his jib. I like the way he goes about it. And I think that you know, he's another guy that he has some good rides last year. And I'd like to, you know, be interested to see how he gets on too. Um, so I mean, he's, And yes. he's had some dramas with um, with Tom Famous as well. I remember at Manny Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to see that rekindled, that sort of. And Huertas actually is a really fast starter. He just tends to what I found was he's up in like fifth, sixth, seventh. From about halfway onwards, though, he tends to sort of slip back a bit. He's like he can't quite keep yeah. up with that leading, you know, no. trio or no. quintet. No, although very few people could Can. last year, could yeah. they? You know that uh, yeah, Agata was was generally in a class of his own and could come through from take mm-hmm. his time and just pick him off as the laps went on. But you know, it just looks like it's going to have a different feel. But with some of these Moto Two and Moto Three refugees coming over that mm. always adds something to it, it does. because yes they really are and navarro he is quick and yeah he might be the dark horse you know he might maybe be the we might see him be the champion but i just felt manzi from the year that he put in last year the way he goes about it the fact that he does know the tracks and some of them are slightly different obviously lots of them aren't but some of them are um you know he's probably just a, a whisker in front of navarro for me okay before we wrap it up, just very quickly, I know I tend to, because obviously three of the four Turkish riders are in the World Superbike Paddock, um, unfortunately, Dennis tends to get a little less of the, the limelight. Um, he's now go, gone into the IO squad, which is, for all intents and purposes, the like um, reference Moto3 team. Um, still hasn't won a race. Uh, another one of those Turks that, again, maybe tries too hard. Um, and it doesn't quite happen for him. What do you think, uh, how impressed have you been with him in the last year or two? And what do you think is going to happen with, again, the big hitters in that class going up? Yeah. Well, I think that firstly, he's in a great place. That team is has consistently built superb world championship winning riders. And I think you will learn a lot in that team. And I think it's just right. I think also they're hopefully, don't get me wrong, it's a hard-nosed, results-driven team, as are all teams. But mm-hmm. he's there, you know, he's got it, He's he deserves it. And I think that hopefully also they can build him up. You know, like I say before, I do think sometimes it's easy to, you know, oh, he's not done quite enough or not done this. But actually, it's a super, super competitive class. You know, when you see what they're doing in Spain at what young ages and what you're up against to even get there. But I think he couldn't be in a better position than he is right now. Okay. You know, he's with undoubtedly, you've got to say, probably the best team. Um, and, you know, I think that, you know, I think he, he needs a he needs an arm round him rather than a, come on, do this. Do you know what I mean? I think, I think he's proved he's got real speed and hunger and aggression. And um, and I like the look of him, but I I kind of feel like we we probably haven't seen the best of him yet. Yeah, um, the, the racecraft you know, just doesn't seem quite quite yeah, there yet. And, yeah, and he's and so he's kind of you know, but he's still learning. And I think that you know this is going to be a this is going to be a very telling year. This you know, it's it's a it's a. You know, it's a kind of a make or break year for mm. this class for him in a way because you're not you get you know he's he's going to have the tools to do the job and you know it's going to come down to him. Yes. Um, but I think that you know, as I say, I think he'll be putting himself under enough pressure. So I think probably you know for his fans, it's a question of trying to support him and and you know and get behind him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he looked crestfallen when he he lost to that. Um... Uh, to to Guevara in that last race, and you know he 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 took the lead in the last few laps, and then just yeah. couldn't just couldn't defend it into that last in Valencia, that last yeah. left hander leading onto the start finish. He looked like I thought he was going to cry, yeah. but um, yeah. and, John was there, his brother was there, Top Rock was there, and Kenan was yeah. there. I think he probably needed that just for them to sort of console him and say, "Look, it's yeah. going to happen. Just relax." 
And I love that. It's so special the way yeah. they all get together and support each other. You know, it's a really wonderful thing that little, you know, the 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 way the Turkish riders do that. It's um, you know, I think that's a really unique thing within the world and uh, a very special thing. You know, there's always a, a few friends of friends supporting of other riders in different classes, but to see all the top guys always kind of there for each other. I think that's a it's a lovely thing you, everyone should be very it, proud of. It is, mate. I was very humbled when I was at Donny and, um, you know, just walking around through the crowd and there were people with top rock flags or Turkish flags that weren't Turkish. Some of them were even English, like yeah. thick Yorkshire accents. I was like, yeah. hang on, what's going on here? Yeah. Like, But, you know, you yeah. class, that's the point, isn't it? It's one of, one of the things about bikes. It doesn't matter where you're from you know you can support whoever you want you know, yes. whether it be hard harger back in the day or whether yeah. it be valentino rossi or you know at the end of the day god i'm a huge top rack fan how can you not be mm. you know the guy is incredible what he's done on the thing but you know equally i can you know i, I greatly admire what bautista's done you know i'm a big fan of johnny ray from what he's done and you know you've got to admire foggy and rossi or whether it be marquez you know very few of the guys that i greatly admired growing up as motorcycle racers were English. You know, most of them weren't. No. But it didn't matter to me. I didn't support them because of where they came from. I supported them because of what they did in the track and how they yeah. made me feel and what they did and what I wanted, how good I wanted to be. And so, you know, I think that's a wonderful thing. It crosses boundaries and language and religion. It's all irrelevant. You know, it's about, you know, the guy that sings to your soul. Yes, 100%. And um, on that, on that bombshell, <laughs> um, I think we can probably wrap it up for today. I think we've gone through pretty much, like I said, I just wanted to dissect for the most part the, the 2022 season with you. Uh, obviously, an ex-racer who can look at it through the eyes and the lens of a racer because you've been there. You know what it feels like. I owned a motorbike for about nine months and I was crap on it. I'm not a racer you know, it's not about that though, isn't it? You obviously, you <laughs> love it, you're into it, yep. you enjoy it. And it's, you know, it, it, it's great to see. So it's kind of, um, yeah, all good. All good. Excellent, mate. Well, um, I don't know. I don't know how you feel about maybe coming on again, maybe talk, talking about your career. Because I'll be honest, on your Wikipedia, there's not really as much info as I thought there would be. Um, to be so... honest, I am rubbish on those sort of things. You know I mean? I don't really get, I just, oh, I don't know, life moves on, doesn't it? You Like I say, I've got three kids and a business and then, you know, the, the other stuff. And it's sort of, you know, I should probably update it or have someone look at it and do some, yeah, I know yeah. my, I know my actual profile on social media and YouTube and everything is, is diabolical. You know, from what I did, you know, I should, a lot of people who've had a PR company had some good races put on and some good bits, but I don't know. I just, I mean, it just feels like an eternity ago now, if I'm honest. You know. Well, I mean, stuff. I'm sure you can. Rem you obviously have memories, and you know what you did in your career. So, you know, if uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. If you're up for it, we'll do another one, and we can talk about your career, and you can maybe fill me in on some of the blanks that I'm not aware of. Yeah, no worries, dude. Well, listen, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Pleasure's yeah, all really mine, mate. It. Thanks and, a lot, um, mate. You take it easy, yeah. And you too, James. Take care, mate. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.